So Secrets of Playboy, I discovered this show on A&E. It's basically a docu-series that chronicles the darker side of Playboy and, and the Playboy legacy, uh, about 10 or 12 episodes, and the final episode just aired last night at the time of this video. So I wanted to talk about this because A, highly recommend you watch it. There's a lot of really interesting themes and it's very much told in the wake of, or like in the aftermath of the Me Too movement, there's a lot of interwoven themes of that and the exploitation of women, uh, which might seem obvious to some because we're talking about Playboy, but it's really nuanced, I thought, and, and there's a lot of psychology behind it. And of course, when I watch shows like this, I watch it just as a human being living in 2022, but I also do come to these shows as a viewer uh, coming from a you know a gay person's lens as well, so I wanted to share my sort of um, feedback and takeaways from this show. So this show, every single episode is sort of devoted to a different era or a different aspect of the Playboy legacy. So like one episode was what happens you know at the Playboy Mansion. One was what happens at the Playboy parties. One is, you know, a few specific women's stories that are sort of central to or demonstrative of sort of the bigger narrative being told by the show. Uh, so every episode focuses on something else. But what I thought was really well done and and uh, the, the first thing I thought was really fascinating was how it really shows an evolution throughout the different decades, the different eras of Playboy, how the evolution of how women were treated at Playboy. So that would be at the mansion, at the parties, at the photo shoots. You see a shift throughout time and it does get better throughout time, but there's consistently significant issues in how this company exploits women and Hugh Hefner kind of at the epicenter of it. It basically paints him out to be a total predator. And those different eras depicted or, or decades, time periods, really are also a reflection of society, American society at that time. So I thought that that was really uh, poignant to show that it's not just Playboy being this corrupt corporation or co company, but also just a sign of the times of women being more disposable uh, compared to today and being more objectified. Women are still objectified today, obviously. And I, it makes me wonder, like 50 years from now, will people be looking at today and be like, oh my God, how did this happen? but things that are normal to us today. And this comes up a lot. A lot of the women who are in the docu-series are, are older um, now, meaning you know, they were in their 20s or 30s in the 70s or 60s, let's say. And so they're now looking back like, now it's unacceptable, but at the time, a lot of this was normalized. The main thing that really struck me with this show was how many of these women today feel exploited, taken advantage of, some much worse. Some say they were raped by Hugh Hefner or friends of his or men that were hanging out at these. It, it, what's really weird is there's a lot of crossovers from kind of the lessons or the takeaways of the Me Too movement. Like there's a Bill Cosby tie-in. Bill Cosby apparently was very similar in his behavior and antics. Um, as Hugh Hefner, they were friends. Apparently they both gave women quaaludes and you know these, these drugs basically to, to be able to to not consent and, and for these men to take advantage of, of these women. Um, but so what's interesting to me, the, the biggest takeaway for me was all these women coming forward and sharing their story and being like, I didn't know what I was a part of. Like it took me time to wake up to that. And to me, pre this show, I've always thought of Playboy as just like a trashy, you know, it's like softcore porn for middle America. Like it's, I don't, I don't think of, it's not Vogue, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, and even Vogue has, ex, you know, high fashion magazines have exploitation of models as well. But I've never thought of Playboy as like a sophisticated, like art form of the female body. Men were obviously buying these magazines, and maybe some women too, to kind of lust after these naked women. But when I think of Playboy, I always think of kind of like the porn aesthetic, right? Like fake hair, fake boobs, fake lips and just kind of like generic looking girls, women, young women, um, beautiful in a plastic way, like not naturally beautiful, not, not a kind of like allure, 
that I might get from seeing a supermodel in Vogue magazine. And maybe that's because I'm gay, I don't, I don't know, but it's not to me like true eroticism. It's more like low grade, <laughs> like cheap, sexy girls, like car models, glamour models, that's the word, glamour models. So anyway, I say that to say that if I were a woman trying to get into that world, trying to be a playmate or model or, or, or just wanting to be in Beverly Hills or whatever, like I would never be attracted to that world because it would be very clear to me that it's very surface and that it's all about the objectification of women. Like to me, it's so obviously the objectification of women. And so these women who talk in the documentary about how they didn't realize and, and um, you know, they felt it was a safe haven and how many of them too clearly have like, or had at least daddy issues like no father in the picture or they were raped growing up or like there was sexual abuse. So it's just so fascinating to me that some people, for them it's, it's common sense, like it's so obvious that this is maybe not what you want to get involved with. If you're concerned that you might get exploited, objectified, at worst raped, I would never be attracted to that world. But you, you hear these women talk about how they felt welcome, they felt safe at the Playboy Mansion, they felt like it was this paradise. And it's so odd to me because I would never think of the Playboy Mansion as a paradise. If anything, I feel like I'm the kind of person, I would feel uncomfortable in that kind of environment because it's so, again, surface. And I guess today's version of that would be like the Instagram influencer, right? Like a few months back, I was hanging out at a bar with some friends and, and it was an, a nice hotel bar because it's Miami, so you hang out at hotel bars. And these three girls came in and they were pretty, but in a very, it was like all eyes on them kind of thing. The way they were dressed, they were very, they, they, they know how to leave the house wanting to be seen. But it was very surface Instagram influencer beauty. And ironically, one of them is an Instagram influencer. It was just very, I remember my friend said, they look like LA girls. They look like, you know, models, but from LA. And the distinction there is, again, it's a glamor model thing. It's a, you know, fake boobs, you know, nice hair, whatever, but kind of like generic beauty, like all American Abercrombie and Fitch beauty, as opposed to somebody that you're like, wow, I've never seen somebody who looks like this before. And maybe that also comes from me, you know, growing up in, in a different, you know, coming from a different culture internationally, also living in New York City for so long. Like my understanding of beauty maybe is very different from somebody who grows up in, I don't know, Little Rock, Arkansas. But for me, I instantly am like, oh, this person's beautiful, but it's like a service beauty. Like I'm not, like I have no, con like there's no interest, in, like there's no connection to this person. That's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of when I saw these women at a hotel a few months ago and these men were like gawking at them. And it, in me sort of judging these women for how surface they look, like the fake lips, fake hair, fake boobs, whatever, I then also judge these men for being into them because I'm like, wow, you're all so like glib. And so the takeaway for me with the Playboy show was how, how is it that I have those cues that I would never be susceptible to get trapped in the Playboy world if I were a woman, a young woman. But these women like didn't see those cues. Like they just had no awareness and then they fell into the lines then. Now I'm fully aware, of course, as I'm watching this, then I'm like, wow, I wonder what cues they have that I don't have, right? And it made me think about how women always feel so comfortable with me and how it's always been so easy for me to make female friends. And it's probably because they don't feel that I'm a threat. They've been programmed in a sense, or they've programmed themselves maybe to an extent, to know what a threat looks like in a man. I'm approachable, so they, there isn't that. And then I feel comfortable with them because I'm not trying to get anything out of a woman. But with men, right, I have a different dynamic, both with straight and gay men. It's always more complicated to build an organic connection. And I think that's because there's a sizing up thing. Um, there's an intimidation thing sometimes, and it could be on my end, it could be on their end. So I highly recommend this show. I think there's so many takeaways. You know, it's, it's really sad that it's yet another story of women being exploited in such a huge way and nobody really caring until now. Like, I've never thought of Playboy as a wholesome, you know, angelic, pure thing, but I didn't realize it was like that as bad as they talk about in the show. And of course, like any other situation, like Bill Cosby, it's the same thing, Harvey Weinstein, you have a lot of backlash and people saying like, oh, they just 
are money hungry, they just are chasing the fame. And a lot of the backlash is from people in the Playboy world who are like, Hugh Hefner was amazing, he was so nice to me, he treated me like royalty. And again, it's so interesting how these people never have a nuanced mindset about this and they think that their experience must be this other person's experience and they don't realize that all of this is so complex, right? None of these women could have been exploited if off the bat something was was off. It's grooming, it's it's manipulation, it's the the, the facade of a, of a safe haven. So there's so many nuances in these conversations and it's interesting to me that so many people don't see those nuances and then they fall for it, whether as a victim, like a sexual victim, or as a victim, like a cog in the wheel who enables this without even maybe realizing it because they're an employee or they're a friend of or whatever. Have any of you guys seen this show? If so, I would love to, to hear what, what your takeaways were from it.